Ubisoft has added a ton of secondary gadgets to the game, with the game at the time of recording having a total of 14 secondary gadgets to choose from. So today I'm going to be going over all 14 of the secondary gadgets in Rainbow Six Siege and tier listing them. I'll be starting off from the D tier and moving my way up to the S tier. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Our first secondary gadget of the video is the proximity alarm, which I've placed in the bottom of D tier. This secondary gadget can be deployed on surfaces and when attackers walk into their radius, the alarm will begin beeping until they leave the radius. My main issue with prox alarms is that they don't do anything to slow down or stop attackers. All they do is provide a warning of where the attackers are coming from. Compare this to something like barbed wire, proximity alarms have nothing on them. They're by far the worst secondary gadget in the game right now because they don't do anything to slow the attackers down at all. Next up, we have claymores, which I also put in the D tier, slightly above proximity alarms. Don't get me wrong, claymores do have certain use cases that are strong, like placing them under windows, but majority of the time, defenders will just shoot them or impact them if they need to. You will rarely get value out of them, and I only think these things are worth running on maps where runouts and window jump outs are prevalent. Now moving on to the C tier, where breaching charges will be starting us out. The breaching charge is a solid secondary gadget, but they have a glaring problem, that being their sound. Breaching charges when deployed make a loud noise on the surface they are placed on. This can allow defenders to wall bang you as soon as you place them down. So using them to destroy barricades, windows, or soft walls is a huge risk. But using them to play vertically is strong and honestly it's the best part of them. Since you get three of them you can open up a decent amount for your team if your sledge dies or if you just don't have a vertical play operator. But obviously these things can't supplement a vertical play operator like buck or sledge. They can just kind of help you out if a situation goes poorly. To finish off C tier we have the bullet proof camera. This thing is pretty much the definition of average. You can set them up in high traffic locations to get some of that much needed intel. Also it has an EMP built into it that can allow you to disable drones and other attacker gadgets. But the problem with the bulletproof camera is that you can destroy it super easily. You can melee it to stop defenders from seeing through them, you can shoot the side of them to just outright destroy them, or you can use explosives to destroy them if you need to. Also any form of EMPs can be used to disable them as well. With all these counters it makes the bulletproof camera's use case pretty niche. But, like I said, they definitely aren't bad, they're just not the best. Now to move on to the B tier, which will start out with the hard breach target. You may expect these to be higher, considering that these things can achieve the job of some operator's entire gadget, but the problem is that they don't do it well. When used on walls, they can only make a vaultable or crouchable hole. However, they are at their strongest when used on hatches, because you only need one of them to open a hatch. So if you're going to bring them, I would recommend using them for that specific use case. They can be used if you need to open a wall in a pinch, but for the most part, they shouldn't be used for that. And due to them only having one good use case, I don't think it's worth putting them any higher than B tier. Next up, also in the B tier, are smoke grenades. Smoke grenades used to be downright overpowered, but they have a lot of problems nowadays. First off, Warden, Jaeger, Wamai, and Aruni all counter smokes. Also, any bulletproof camera can see through smoke as well. This makes them one of the most counter secondary gadgets in the game. It can be really difficult to get utility out of them when there are so many counters. However, when they go uncountered, they can cover a plant or open up a potential rush for your team, which can be absolutely huge and damn near round winning. So overall, I think they're good. I just think they have too many counters to justify putting them higher than B. Next up are impact grenades, which I placed in the A tier. And this is when we start to get to the really good secondary gadgets. Impacts have many uses. They can create rotates, open hatches, create vertical holes, destroy OSHA shields, counter shield operators like Spontane and Blitz, and they can help you safely finish a now. With all of these different uses, you may be wondering why aren't they high? Well, the jobs impacts do can be done by other things. For example, rotates can be made by shotguns and shields can be countered by nitro cells and other gadgets like smokes canisters. Impact grenades are still really good. I just think other gadgets can do their jobs slightly better. Moving on, we have barbed wire. If you're a lower rank or you just haven't played the game a lot, you may be surprised by this placement, but hear me out. Barbed wire is pretty much a requirement on most bomb sites. This is because without barbed wire, attackers can sneak up staircases or down hallways without warning. And with the recent uptick in Nook's pick rate in the meta, this problem can be even worse because now you can't even rely on your cameras to provide you with proper intel. Now, prox alarms are able to do this, but what they don't do is slow attackers down. The main reason why it's slowing attackers is useful is because the attackers are met with two options. They either have to A, destroy the barbed wire making a ton of noise and delaying their time, or they have to walk through it making them vulnerable to an easy swing from defenders. So overall, I think this is a super slept on secondary gadget and it is miles better than the proximity alarm which is its competitor. 
Continuing on in the A tier, we have flashbangs. Flashbangs are becoming more and more prevalent as time goes on. This is due to Jaeger and Wamai's pick rates both being lower than ever. This means that in this current meta, you might actually get to use flashbangs for their purpose, flashing defenders. Now you may be thinking to yourself, aren't flashbangs countered by everything that smoke grenades are? Well, you would be correct on that. But flashbangs are used to burn these gadgets. Since you get three of them, you can burn through all of Jaeger's ADSs or some of Wamai's magnets if you need to. If you don't know what I mean by burning, basically burning an ADS or Wamai magnet is when you intentionally throw projectiles into them so that way you can use more important secondary gadgets like grenades without being countered. This is by far the most common use for them and it is probably their strongest. Now to talk about the Gon 6, which is the last gadget in the A tier. It is debatable whether this is a secondary gadget since it fills a secondary gun slot but I consider it to be one. The Gon 6 is a hand cannon that has one bullet, which can be used to destroy hard utility. This includes things like deployable shields, maestro cameras, or even the bulletproof cameras we talked about earlier. This is super strong because majority of the defender's strongest gadgets happens to be forms of hard utility. Also, since the Gon 6 is a secondary weapon, you can still have another secondary gadget alongside it, which gives it some extra viability. Now to move on to the S tier, which we have the Nitro Cell starting us out. I think most of us can agree that it is one of the best defender secondary gadgets in the game, and it's for good reason. Nitro Cells can get you free kills, deny the plant, and help to deal with shield operators if the situation calls for it. Also, if you absolutely need to, you can use them to make a hole in a soft wall or hatch to make a quick getaway. Also, a huge plus of the Nitro Cell is that it doesn't have any counters right now. The only thing attackers can do to deal with them is to shoot them before they explode. So clearly, I think they belong right here where they are. Following up the Nitro Cell, we have Impact EMPs. These are a relatively new secondary gadget that can help to fill the role of Thatcher when he's banned. They can disable every electronic device on the defensive side. This includes Kaid's Electric Claws and Bandit's Batteries, which is what you'll be using them on most of the time. The reason why they are so strong is because they make getting walls or hatches open without Thatcher much easier. All you have to do is drone out where the Electro Claws or Bandit Batteries are and then throw your Impact EMPs close by. This strategy has single-handedly made Kaid a much more niche option. And just because of how important getting a wall open is, I think impact EMPs have to be in the S tier. Next up is frag grenades. These are by far the best attacker secondary gadget there is, and for multiple reasons. They can be used to force defenders out of power positions, they can destroy hard utility, they can be used in combination with flashbangs to get free kills, and you can use them to get kills from below. With all of these potential use cases, you still get two of them, which is just crazy. The only downside to nades is that they are countered by a ton of operators like flashbangs and smokes are, but this downside doesn't outweigh the ridiculous amount of use utility nades bring to the table. Now for the final and best secondary gadget in the game, that being the deployable shield. This likely isn't surprising to any of you. The deployable shield allows defenders to hold positions that they normally wouldn't be able to. And honestly, without them, a lot of bomb sites wouldn't be viable. Deployable shields are kind of the center of defender balance right now, and I don't know what the game would be like without them. A lot of defender gadgets like ADSs and Wamai magnets are mainly used to defend deployable shields because of how strong they are. Well, this is the final tier list. With the deployable shield at the top and proximity alarms at the bottom. As always, these videos are strictly my opinion, and if you disagree, feel free to leave your takes in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, I make Siege content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't want to miss the next upload. If you want to watch another video just like this one, a video will be popping up on your screen right now. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.